In this video, we'll be calculating the integral of a Gauss curve, and in particular, a Gauss curve with a standard deviation of 1 and an average of 0. Now this boils down to finding the area under this bell curve. As always, if you have any questions along the way, feel free to ask them in the comments down below. And with that said, let's get right into it. And if you already had a go at this integral yourself, then you probably noticed that your standard integration methods like substitution or partial integration don't quite work. In fact, to solve this integral, we need to go to polar coordinates and that will make it much easier to do so. But before we can go to polar coordinates, we need to do some neat trick. And what we're actually going to do first is to write this integral as the square root of the square of this integral and basically thereby doing nothing. It would be the same as saying that x is equal to the square root of x squared. Now this might seem very strange to start off with, but it will become very clear later on. So we write this integral as the following, the square root of this integral from minus to plus infinity of e to the power of minus x squared dx multiplied with itself. So again, the integral from minus to plus infinity of e to the power of minus x squared dx. We close the bracket and we close the square root. And at this point we realize that this x here is just a name. We could have easily called it u or whatever. And in fact, we are going to rename it as y. So we get the square root of this first integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of e to the power of minus x squared dx multiplied by the same integral from minus to plus infinity but now we call x y, so e to the power of minus y squared dy. And we close the square root. And you might say that at this point, we didn't really do anything at all, right? We just written x as the square root of x squared, and we've renamed this x in this second integral as simply y. But at this point, it will become clear why we did so. Remember that I said that to solve this integral, we want to go to polar coordinates and polar coordinates are r and theta, a length and an angle. And remind yourself that r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. And seeing this right here, it starts to look like we're doing something right because we have an x squared here and a y squared here. And we can simply pull these two integrals together and use the fact that e to the power of a multiplied by e to the power of b is simply e to the power of a plus b. And that's exactly what we'll be doing right now. So again, we have this square root, but now we multiply these two integrals together since they don't have the same integration variable. So we get the first integral from minus infinity to plus infinity. We get the second integral from minus infinity to plus infinity. We get e to the power of minus x squared minus y squared simply multiplying this e to the power of minus x squared with this e to the power of minus y squared. And then we of course have our dx and dy. And we close our square root. So just to check that we have everything, we have this integral right here, which is this integral, this e to the power of minus x squared and dx. And we have this integral right here, which is this one with e to the power of minus y squared dy. So indeed, everything checks out and we didn't forget anything. And now we see that in this exponent, we have minus x squared minus y squared. Now this can of course be very easily rewritten as minus x squared plus y squared, which is of course equal to minus r squared, which is of course our polar coordinate. So at this point, what we're going to do is to rewrite these two integrals over dx dy simply as integrals over r and theta, basically switching from Cartesian coordinates, where we integrate over the entire two-dimensional space, x goes from minus to plus infinity and y goes to minus to plus infinity, to polar integrals that are doing the same, basically integrating over the entire space. This means that we get the following, again our square root of now an integral from minus to 2 pi of d theta, so basically integrating over the entire circle, multiplied with the integral from minus to plus infinity of r times e to the power of minus r squared dr. 
and you'd be very correct to wonder where this R suddenly comes from, well, this basically comes from going from Cartesian to polar coordinates. And in fact, I have a video on surface integrals where I go through this R in detail. So check this out if you want to know exactly where this R comes from and an intuitive explanation of this. We close our square root and we see that we at this point have an integral that we can very easily solve. So let's do that right now. We have of course the square root, which we simply copy. This first integral simply becomes two pi because we're integrating, well, nothing, simply one from zero to two pi. And that becomes two pi minus zero, which is simply two pi. Now we multiply this with the integral from zero to plus infinity of r times e to the power of minus r squared dr. And of course, now we need to solve this integral. And in fact, this integral can be very easily solved by using the substitution method, namely that we call a new variable u as being r squared. This of course means that du, the differential, is equal to 2r dr. And well, r dr is exactly what we have here, r dr. We're just missing the two, but we can simply compensate this by writing one over two. So this becomes the following. We get that this is equal to, again, this square root, of 2 pi, which simply remains, of the square root of 0 to plus infinity of e to the power of minus u multiplied by du, and we need to compensate this by multiplying by 1 over 2. We see, of course, that this 2 in front of the pi and this 1 half cancel each other out, and we get the following, again, this very large square root of pi multiplied by the integral of e to the power of minus u du. Now, since the integral of e to the power of u du is simply e to the power of u, we get, of course, the following. We get minus 1, since we have e to the power of minus u, instead of e to the power of u, multiplied by e to the power of minus u, filled in in the boundaries 0 and plus infinity. And we can now simply take this home and compute these boundaries. We get that this is equal to the square root of minus pi, multiplied by the following, filling in the upper boundary, plus infinity, in e to the power of minus u, we get e to the power of minus infinity. And then we subtract from this, filling in the lower boundary, zero, in e to the power of minus u, we get e to the power of minus zero. Now, since we know that e to the power of minus a very large negative number is simply zero, so we can replace this e to the power of minus infinity with zero. And any number to the power of zero is of course simply one. So we get here a one. So what we get is minus pi multiplied by minus one. And this is of course simply plus pi. And there we have it. We already have our solution. We get the square root of pi. And so what we have found is that the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of e to the power of minus x squared dx, so the area under a Gaussian curve, is simply equal to the square root of pi. And this is actually a quite interesting result because remind yourself that this integral represents the area under a bell curve. And a bell curve is something that occurs everywhere. Everywhere where you do statistics, you will find a bell curve. For example, if you would plot the height of every human on this planet, then the result will form a bell curve. And this means that the area under the curve that is obtained from plotting the height of every human on the planet will have a factor pi in it. Now, of course, we all know pi as the ratio of the circumference of a circle by its diameter. So how are these two actually connected? And this is a very interesting problem, but we'll leave for another video. And this brings us to the end of this video. And I hope that you now know how to take this integral. If you have any questions, leave a comment in the comment section below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and you can also consider subscribing. And with that, I will see you in the next one. Bye.